Ruby, Davey, Gavin, welcome. Everyone, welcome. It's great to see you here in such numbers in the wonderful setting of Barberstown Castle. Thanks very much for being with us here this evening. And I'm sure, like the four of us, you're all very excited about the prospect of the Cheltenham Festival next month. I've no doubt quite a few of you here tonight will be heading across, making the journey. Hopefully it's going to be a fantastic week, I think particularly after we all missed out last year. Well, Ruby was there, obviously, but he's VIP. But the rest of us missed out last year. And we're all very much looking forward to getting back. Ruby, how are you? Might as well start with you. Are you looking really forward to it? Are you I really excited? I really enjoyed Cheltenham last year, Gary. I'm sure you did. I had the whole um, Princess Royal stand to myself. Um, stood on the balcony in Lady Bamford's box for the week. Um, you know, the Royal box was empty beside me. I had the run of the place. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm rather disappointed everyone's coming back this year. I won't have the same VIP treatment, but... Um, uh, yeah, I loved it last year, to tell you the truth. He's never worried about putting people's noses out of joint. I know you're on the road to Cheltenham with Angus McNay last night, and a little birdie tells me, I didn't see the show myself, but you were suggesting maybe it's not going to be as one-sided this year. Do you think uh, Ireland are still going to win the Presby Cup, which is obviously yeah, what we're uh, all uh, most worried about? I do, but like, I do believe, and I know because I did it myself, we see things through green-tinted glasses. And, you know, at the moment we seem to have green goggles on under the green tinted goggles, uh, under the green tinted glasses even. But there are plenty of English horses with chances. I don't see the same landslide. I do think the Irish horses will ultimately win more races than the English. But, um, or British, depending on whether a high senior wins. If he wins, it'll be British. Um, if he doesn't, it'll just be English. Um, <laughs> um, but I, I don't see it being quite as emphatic. What about Davy? Do you think he's going to ride any winners over there this year? I'd like a price on Davy to last a week. <laughs> <laughs> right, Davy. Can't even last a day at the moment. <laughs> he's out injured at the moment again, folks. But Davy, compared to the fall, obviously you have it kept you out of Cheltenham last year. This one, you're just a bit sore, is that it? Yeah, yeah. It's just a couple of things. Um, 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 my ankle. It's uh, <laughs> a little bit sore. I learned that from Ruby there one day. He, I think he broke his back or something and his thumb was giving him a bit of water so my ankle is at me at the moment so based on what i saw of him at the dinner table folks he's making the most of his few days off anyway he didn't leave too much behind him davy is in all seriousness i mean challenge been very kind to you over the years how excited are you about getting back there this year you got some smashing horses to ride yeah some lovely horses to ride i i don't actually get too excited uh, or i try not to get in, ex too excited about it i try to treat it as just you know another day's racing uh, unfortunately that's the way i have to treat it um and uh just looking forward to getting on some of them really nice horses again you know it's it's uh, you miss them through you know you get these big these lovely feeling of riding a really nice horse and then you kind of go through a couple of days or weeks maybe riding not such a high caliber of horse and next thing you get back on them again and it's it's just a different feeling and so it's really looking forward to getting back on them again Good man, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to seeing you in action over there as well. We're talking about plenty of the horses Davey's going to be riding at Cheltenham. Gavin, it's an interesting point Davey makes there. He, he was saying there he doesn't get too excited, but you'll often hear punters say, or the saying goes, you know, a winner at Cheltenham pays the same as a winner at Fontwell or, or Bannam Robe or some, somewhere like that. Do you get more of a kick as a punter, and this man's a very shrewd punter, folks, out of backing a winner at Cheltenham than anywhere else? Uh, definitely, Gary, yeah. Uh... I'd be back in horses for Cheltenham probably since October. So, if it turns out that one of the ones you back in December or January ends up winning, sure, it's uh, it makes all the hours worthwhile, you know. Um, we have to remember that between the four of us, Gary, we won eighty-four races at Cheltenham. So, between us, we've averaged twenty-one each. Ruby with fifty-nine and fair points. Yes, yeah, very <laughs> fair points. I hadn't thought of it like that, but now, now you now you put it in those words, it does make sense. And Gavin, just before we get stuck in, we're going to obviously run through the races, folks, on the sheet in just a second. But Gavin, how's the anti-post book looking for you so far? I know you don't waste any time when the previous year's festival ends to getting involved, do you? Yeah, Fernie Hollow is a bit sore. Uh, I think he definitely would have been. He is sore, you're right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit sore myself, so that was a bit nasty. Uh, I don't like the fact that Allegory Devassi was uh, drifting today on Betfair, so hopefully things turn out okay there. Look at anti-post, if, if you end up with 10%, it's amazing. Every year I end up at 10% in the bin before uh, the Supreme, so you just have to get on with it. Is that just the price you have to pay? That's kind of what you'd expect, is it, roughly? Yeah, if you lose 10% beforehand of your money, I take it every year. Yeah, it's grand. And hopefully the better odds make up for the fact that, uh, that you've lost 10%. Who's the big winner this year? Who's the one horse that you'd love to see win above all of this? Um, 
no point in saying Gallup and Deschamps for the RSA anymore or the, the Brown Advisory. Um, I'll give you a couple later on for handicaps. How's that? Say no more. We'll hold him to that, folks, because we are going to be touching on the handicaps. The weights aren't out yet, but I think Gavin's made an educated guess as to a few marks that perhaps might be able to be exploited by some horses next month. Just hopefully you've all got your sheets there, and if you haven't, hopefully you'll be able to pick up one just maybe to follow the running order. But we're going to stick to that, and we have got some video footage. We're just going to roll that in the background when we're talking about the races just to, I suppose, maybe use as a backdrop and, and bring the guys in and get their thoughts about the horses. The first one we're going to talk about is the Supreme Novice Hurdle, and the first horse we're seeing in VT here is Sir Gerhard winning at Leopards. And Ruby, obviously, you're the man we want to come to here first because this has been set up as a great Anglo-Irish battle to kick off the week. Nicky Henderson's got two very good horses there, Constitution Hill and John Bon. William Mullins has got Sir Gerhard and Dysart Dynamo. Which one do you think is most likely to pitch up here as, as things stand? Look, I, when I was riding, I would have given you a I don't know answer because I'd be afraid what Willie might think if I if I did give the answer. Um, but now I'm retired, I, I still don't know. Um, but look, to me, I think this this is the best race. And I think Willie's going to need his best horse to win this race. And I think that's the best horse, Sir Gerhard. Now, I haven't ridden either. And it will ultimately, you know, Paul will have a huge say in which way either horse goes but um i think he's the best horse but davy rode against both he was second to both he, he'll have a different opinion on it um but i rode him work before christmas sir gerhard and i loved him I, I think he's a he's a hell of a race horse and i think he'd win either but i think willie will need to to play his ace here to win the race okay but is that because you rate the english horses so highly i do i I wasn't, look, there's Kilcrot who looked unlucky in last year's Cheltenham bumper. He's guaranteed to run in the race. He'll go forward, you would imagine, the way like, like he was ridden um, when he won his maiden hurdle in Punchestown. So, you know, he, he did look unlucky last year. That was his best performance this year. Um, and he, he's a decent horse. But I do rate the English horses. I thought Constitution Hill was brilliant in Sandown. Um, and I think John Bon, I wasn't disappointed with him in... in in Haydock, a lot of people were. I wasn't. Um, I think he's a hell of a good horse too, and I think it's a it's a crack and supreme. To tell you the truth. And Kilcrut there, just to finish on him, Ruby. He obviously was just beaten by Sir Gerhard at Cheltenham last year. His star seems to have fallen a bit in the meantime. Has he got a chance after that easy win? Yeah, he does. Um, I think a lot of people read last year's Cheltenham bumper wrong. Um, in that, a lot of people felt Sir Gerhard was given too much to do. I think Sir Gerhard just, sorry, Kilcrot was giving too much to do. I think Sir Gerhard just burnt him off uh, down the hill and then got a little bit tired in the last 100 yards, which allowed Kilcrot to close. Um, but that, yeah, he, he's still a good horse, but I think Sir Gerhard's a better horse. Okay, uh, let's bring Davy in. Davy, we're having a look at John Bond winning at Haydock here last time. And like a lot of the market principles here, he's got a point to point background. So I assume on the back of that, he's obviously a horse you're going to love. But where, where do you see the winner coming from in this particular race? Yeah, I I, 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 lo I love John Bond. Um, um, Sir Gerhard point to point as well. So you know, there's plenty of minutes that has that have you know loads of experience. Um, um, just getting back to what Ruby said, I rode behind both of them. Um, I suppose um, Sir Gerhard was around Leopardstown, you know, big on his track, and 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 Dysart Dynamo was around the inside of Punchestown, which is all speed. And I was just blown away by Dice or Dynamo. I, I just kind of found it hard how anything would be able to beat him. I think he's very, very good. Um, but he's got a lot of speed and he likes to go forward. I'm sure, well, not that he likes to go forward, but that he's quite forward going and he just might be not the easiest horse to settle. And I think it'll fall onto the lap of the likes of John Bond and, you know, the likes of them horses that will stay that little bit better it could it could fall to a to a horse that that has stamina and for me that would be the likes of john bon sir gerard has loads of stamina as well you know I, I don't think there's any worry there what gordon will run look he's got mighty potter in it um who's won over two miles but there was a um a feeling maybe that he might step out and trip um i don't think that's a negative for him i think he'll have no brother staying um and i'd say um, three we just pause that VT there, guys, please. Just we'll come on to that in a second. Three stripes life might, again, he can go out and trip or stay. 
but they don't seem to be good. Well, Mighty Potter does, but Three Stripes of Life doesn't seem to be good enough to um to uh, to win a, a, a Supreme Novices. But he he definitely run a nice race. I think it's strong form. But I think John Bond is probably the horse we all have to. He he's got more in the book. He's more done, and he's got you know loads of graft behind him. I think he's he's the horse that people are underestimating a little bit. Fair play. Okay, John Bond, good shout from Davy Ruby. Very much in the cigar camp. If he runs, Gavin, what are you expecting? Have you got involved in the race yet? Um, I have, and it's uh, William Mullins for me. Um, I think that uh, certainly over the last couple of weeks, Betfair has been saying that uh, Dysart Dynamo is going to go here and that uh, Sir Gerhard will end up in the Ballymore. If you look at the handicap ratings, the British handicapper has given John Bond 145. He's given Constitution Hill 148. The two are Willies. Now, I'm not talking about Kilcrut just yet, but... Uh, Dysart Dynamo and Sir Gerhard have ratings of 150. If they went over to England, they'd probably get another two or three pounds. To me, that puts them, say, five clear of Constitution Hill. Uh, Dysart Dynamo's time in Punchtown was very fast. <clears throat> Sir Gerhard's was very fast the day. It was quicker than um, Honeysuckle in the Irish Champion Hurdle. There's a couple of uh, horses there that give cross-reference in terms of form. Uh, one is Might I. Uh, finished five, five lengths behind uh, John Bonn. John Bond was given a five pounds. It was beaten 14 lengths by Constitution Hill. And might I was giving uh, Constitution Hill three pounds that day. So that's an eight pound swing. So there's probably not a lot between them. And you have to remember in Haydock that the horse that was second, Richmond Lake, is only rated 132. To me, that's, that's not a very high, you know, it's quite a low rating for a horse in that bracket. For example, uh, when you look at Gringo Dabrell, the day we rode in Punchtown, he's rated 130. And again, that's an Irish rating. So he's probably of similar quality to Richmond Lake if they met in a handicap. So to me, Dysart Dynamo stands out. I think he'll go here. Um, the other horse that is worth mentioning in terms of cross-reference with form is uh, Colonel Mustard. In Ascot, he was beaten just under three lengths, whereas in, in Leopardstown, he was beaten 12 lengths by Sir Gerhard. So, and Lorna Fowler said that the race in Ascot didn't suit Colonel Mustard. They went slow. She said he definitely hated that. Now, probably they all did, but he definitely did. Whereas in Leopardstown, they went to full gallop, which he enjoyed. Uh, he's a decent horse, Colonel Mustard. Kilcross was much better the last day. Uh, got beat in Cork, got beat at Christmas, maybe didn't stay two and a half. Unlucky last year in the bumper. Uh, he won very, very well in a poor race the last day. He must have a little squeak. But uh, for me, if depending on which way Willie goes, I think you have to go with either Dysart Dynamo or Sir Gerhard. Good man, thanks Gavin. Ruby, final word to you then. You, by the sound of things, wouldn't necessarily be as confident about Dysart, Dysart Dynamo if he was the Mullins number one here, would you? I haven't ridden him. Um, I, I've watched him and I just, I don't know. I, I'm wary about the inside track in Punchestown when it comes to replicating that to form in Cheltenham. And I sat down and did win a two miles, two furlong bumper at Clonmel first time up. He has it in the book um, to go a bit further. So I, I'd just be, look, that's only my opinion. Um, I just think Sir Gerhard's a hell of a race horse in Midway runs on the first on Tuesday or the first on Wednesday. Uh, I'd be with him whichever day he runs. Say no more. Okay, big vote of confidence for Cigar Hard, wherever he pitches up from Ruby. That's a great race to kick off the festival. And we move on to the Arkle Trophy. We might let the video roll again, please, guys. We've already just had Blue Lord winning the Irish Arkle in the background there, Ruby. How key a piece of form is that? And as we see another Willie Mullins here, Hotan Colors, who it's, fell in the Arkle. Yeah, he fell in the Arkle. Look, Blue Lord, Riviera de Tell, I think that form could turn around. I don't think that's, that the Arkle form is that strong. There's no one horse you want to be on that's head and shoulders above the others. I think Blue Lord, Riviera de Tell, Edward Stone, the English horse, is the rock solid one. Um, of the Irish horses, if you were pushing me, Gary, I'd probably go for the one that was third in the Irish Arkle, St. Sam. I thought he made two fairly significant mistakes late in the race which allowed the opposition into the race and, and I might be I might be with him but I don't I think the Arkle form is very murky and I think that'll be a race for the bookmakers okay Gavin what about you this Arkle is this going to be one staying for the home team bit of, bit of hush please guys down at the back thank you uh, I think it's a very very open race I probably would go for Edward Stone he's rated 159 uh, Riviere de Tell is rated 150 but don't forget she gets seven pounds um, Blue Lord was giving it nine pounds in the Irish Arkle. This time it gives it seven, so he's two pound better off. And he did win by a half a length, but Riviere de Tell would have won except for the mistake at the last, and also that there was a gust of wind that took Paul over in front of her, which was unlucky. Um, I would say also that the pace in the race is going to come from Magic Days. 
uh, Henry's horse, very impressive, first time out in Cork, obviously got beat then after that, but I'd imagine there's going to be a strong pace in the race. I'd be leaning towards Edward Stone simply because of its jumping. Uh, it's an incredible jumper, it makes lengths at every fence. Now there's lots of good jumpers in it, Blue Lord was maybe not quite as good the previous time, uh, the last day in Leprosound had been good before that. Riviere de Tell normally jumps quite well. I'd actually be interested in asking the lads a question here. Although none of these are grade one hurdlers, I'm interested just as a generalization, is it a case that all these horses, Edward Stone, Riviere de Tell, uh, Blue Lord, etc., third time lucky, they were quite keen over hurdles. Do you think Ruby or Davy that a keen hurdler is suited to two mile chasing? That the fences maybe calm them down a bit, but they're very attack minded horses, so it kind of seems to suit them. Depends on the individual. Um, like, I'd say Blue Lord maybe isn't as keen over fences as he was hurdles, because fences slightly slow him down, he backs off. But then you get a horse like Under So, who was equally as keen over a fence as he was a hurdle, because the jumps didn't frighten him. Um, you, keen hurdlers that aren't keen over fences generally tell me that they're slightly afraid of the fences, and that's what slows them down. And I wouldn't be for a two-miler that's slightly afraid of the fences, and that's what pushes me back to saying, Sam, I think to win two-mile chases, you need a horse that wants to go and jump them, and that's why I'd be with him. Davy, does that make sense to you? Hi, uh, yeah, definitely. I think um, a fence needs to bring improvement, not not um, not a, a. Thank you, folks. Thank they, you. There can never be a negative. Um, if a horse is a really free hurdler, I'd be an awful lot happier if, if they were really f as, as keen over fences. Um, you know, Gardens filly is is that. Um, she's made, you know, stepped up plenty. Early on in the year, she was getting all the allowances, but she she's kept them true. She's she she's kept them true and honest, and I, I still feel that she probably would have held Blue Lord in Leopardstown. I think from an Irish point of view, she is the best that we have. Um, getting a clear round. I'm always worried when the Irish don't have a standout horse, as in um, Willie's horse got injured. Um, Fernie Hollow for me. You know that would we'd be moving on to a different race if he was in it. Now the Irish don't have a standout horse, and any year we don't have a standout horse. It's either won by a big priced horse or an English horse, and I think this is that kind of a year. It'll either be won by something picking up the pieces if they go a bit too quick, or you know the likes of Edgerstone who stays you know a little bit further and it's taken well to fences. A fence has improved his him dramatically from his hurdling um to go and chasing for me that's a huge positive and i'd be i'd be looking on the side of an english horse or if you were going to had a fancy at a big price i'd be chancing something like that but from an irish point of view i think gordon's filly is the best filly in the from the irish side um she rock solid she's tough as nails she jumps well you know she was a bit unlucky in leperstown and from that reason i think she's the best and whether she's good enough or not on the day, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I, I couldn't be nailing my colours to the mast right now. Okay, fair play. Have you got a ride in it, Dave? Are you going to be in the stands? No, no, no. Bar, bar the waiting room. The filly comes available. Yeah. Okay. The last thing you'd want to happen, obviously. Yeah. Right, let's move on to the champion hurdle then, folks. The big race on day one. We might let the video go again, please, guys. Gavin, I'll start with you here this time. I don't know whether you're involved in the race, Santi Post, or not, but we're seeing the mighty honeysuckle winning the Irish champion hurdle for the third year running at Leopardstown. Again, a wide margin, impressive win. How relevant is this, though, to this year's race? Nine to four on, she is here in the sheet in front of us. Is there any hope of getting her beaten, do you think? Ah, look, the only way you're going to get her beat, she's 14 from 14, not including her point to point. Just watch her here after the last. When the, the camera, well, the, the day I watched on TV, uh, the camera zooms in on her. And when she's coming up the line, you think she's 15 clear, but she ends up only six clear. It's a good white screen here, as you might see the others, but um, she's going to be very difficult to beat. At the moment, she's £12 clear on ratings because she's 165, plus she gets a £7 mayor's allowance. So she's 172, including that. All the others are 160. See there, she doesn't just win as, by as far as you might have thought. Um, appreciate his rate of 160, but he never got to build on that because he finished after the Supreme. Uh, T Hoopoo is a horse I like. It's now rated 160 from 149, and the Racing Post gave it a rating of 165. Like, it beats Durasso the other day by 11 lengths, uh, who's rated 155. So it's easy why, to see why they gave it 165. Uh, he's got a similar profile uh, to Espar Delenn that won it 
uh, back in 2019. He's won six from seven. Espor Delen was a five-year-old that had won seven from eight. So I just wouldn't discount um, T Hoop. It's a five-year-old. It can be improving all the time. It was very impressive the other day. Appreciate it's got a lot on his plate coming back uh, after a year off. But I think if you get to back T Hoop, who either each way or without, I think that's maybe a bit. Good man. Eight to one T Hoop here on the sheet in front of us for the champion hurdle. We might let the video go again there, guys. I'm going to bring in Ruby to talk about appreciate it. Ruby, a lot of people have said that it's mission impossible to come back from so long and win a champion hurdle. But if anyone can do it, it's Willie Mullins. We've seen in the past Penn Hill, Covega year after year. And I know we've got some of Covega's. Ger O'Brien is definitely here with us tonight. He knows that it can be done. What about this horse? I think he's the only horse that can. Um, and I was probably more confident in the last couple of weeks than I was since yesterday. I've actually backed him at five to one each way. Um, I think I'll get my money back at worst. Um, but then I did, on the road to Cheltenham last night, put that supreme to last year's champion hurdle. And he has quite a bit to make up on, on Honeysuckle. When you look at the two races run side by side, an hour and 10 minutes apart, two hours apart, um, she annihilated him. From being a long way behind him, she ends up a long way in front of him. She is an incredible resource. And I even know, listening to Willie, he thinks it's a, it's a huge task to try and beat Honeysuckle. Appreciate it's in great form. He's a very good horse. But, um, Have you been riding him? No, David Casey is the only one that rides him every day. Um, no one else gets a, a go and appreciate it. Um, but I, I just, I, look, I'm not, I, I have backed him each way, but I think he's going to need, he's going to need luck and Honeysuckle is going to need to be unlucky. Okay. But that's the sort of insight we're here to get from this man, folks. He's on each way. Five to one, appreciate it. Four to one, still out there. Probably get a quarter of the odds somewhere, Ruby, will you? You wouldn't put anybody off? I did, anyway. Okay. Well, we'd expect nothing less from you. VIP account, I'm sure, wherever that is. Davey, I doubt you'll be having a bet in it, but just tell us your thoughts on this year's champion hurdle. Can you see the case for appreciate it? I hope you won't be having a bet in it, anyway. <laughs> you see the case for appreciate it toppling honeysuckle? No, no, I can't. Um, and I take the point that she was only five lengths clear or six lengths clear at the line, but I'm sure Ruby might back me up in this. Six lengths clear in the line at Leopardstown cannot be as the equivalent of 15 lengths in other tracks. Leopardstown, you don't see them big, for some reason or another, you don't see them wide margin winners in them championship races. Um, nothing will beat the Philly, only an act of God or something to go wrong and it just won't happen. She's just, she's just uh, definitely a grade above all the rest. Um, not doubting that Willie can do the, the, the undoable with appreciated, but maybe on other years, if there wasn't a standout in it, like there is the Philly, Definitely, yes, appreciated, could win a champion hurdle on his first run back this season. But I just think if the Philly gets there in any way, shape or form that she was in last year, she's she's pretty much unbeatable. OK, plenty to chew on there, folks. I'm sure you'll agree. Interesting analysis from Gavin and obviously that bombshell from Ruby there that he's unappreciated, albeit only at a slightly bigger price than he is now. Let's move on then. We've got a few more races to talk about on the first day just before we go on to the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. Uh, we'll just hold the VT there, guys, for the time being, if we can. Uh, Gavin, I want to come to you because this is your bread and butter now. This is where you come into your own. We've got the Ultimate Handicap Chase. We've got the Mayor's Hurdle, the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle, and the National Hunt Chase. What have you unearthed in those four? I'll give you a, a, just a, you know, just a... Keep it quiet, please, folks, down the back. Thank you very much. Obviously, you have to allow the fact most of these will get beat, but there you go. Um, uh, the Ultimate Handicap Chase, uh, Paul Byrne recently owned this and uh, sold it to the Whaley Cones. I'm told there's a chance that uh, Noble Yates might go here. Now, maybe it won't, but just somebody said that uh, that horse might go here. It's 14 to 1. Uh, Frodon is in the top weight at the moment, may or may not run. It's got a rating of 164. If that does run and Noble Yates goes here on the way to the, the entry Grand National, uh, Noble Yates will be carrying 10 stone 10. Um, won a, a chase in Galway. It was a big eye catcher for me in the Paddy Power. And the last day was second to Heiss and Joran Weatherby. I thought that was a good run. So I think he's a chance of 14 to 1 in the ultimate. Okay. Any of those other races float your boat or are you, are you waiting more till near the day? Uh, just quickly, lots of pace in the race in the Mayor's Hurdle. Stormy Ireland probably get taken on. I'm hoping that uh, heaven help us and Stormy Ireland take each other on. I think um, 
Queen's Brook might have a chance. Gordon gave a quote before it ran there in Punchestown that it definitely needed the runs. That must have a squeak. And tell me something, girl, would uh, certainly love a uh, fast run race like she got last year in the Mayor's Novice. And the last one just there is the Boodles. Uh, there's lots of horses in here with chances. Bridska, Dr. Brown Bear that I tipped up the other day at 50s and now 20s would have a little squeak, change a yard. Uh, tide turns as well, yeah, absolutely. Um, Gaelic Warrior. I'd be interested to see what Ruby says. Got a rate and had three runs in France. Uh, 129 has been a lot to talk about this horse. Just if you look through its last run in Otai, it finished third um, in a listed race. The horse that won one since and the horse that was second and fourth they finished first and second in a grade one since then in November in Otai. So, by all accounts, David Jennings was talking to the Irish handicapper and he certainly would have gave him a lot more than 129 if he came here using the formula that they use. So, he could be difficult to beat, but it'd be interested maybe if Ruby knows Anthem but Gaelic Warrior. Well, he was definitely playing a straight bat when I asked him about this the other day. Ruby, have you heard any more about Gaelic Warrior in the meantime? I know you haven't been riding the horse yourself, but any feedback? We need this mic on now, folks. <laughs> Did I break it? He's no. back. Uh, no, he hasn't. Nothing has changed with him since you were talking to me last week, Gary. He's still dark grey. Um, he's still the same horse. And uh, who is riding him out at home? I think David rides him as well. All right, you never <laughs> talk to David Casey, do you? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that Casey's flat out right now. Uh, but uh, never takes his phone with him on top of a horse. No, either. no, you can't get in touch with him anymore. No. It's just impossible. Terrible. Um, no, he did school well this morning, though. Okay, so he jumps well. He jumps well, yeah. Is four to one a price, which I think he is at the moment, the top price? Is that a price on the very little that you know about this horse that you think people should be taking? I wonder who took the fives. Um, you, I'd say, the way we're talking. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, Gavin had had us more. Could you see him, Gavin, being any shorter than four to one in, what is it now, 14, 19 days? I, if, if Willie wins the Supreme, if uh, Blue Lord wins the Arkle, if Appreciate is second in the Champion Hurdle, if Stormy, are, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but if he has a couple of winners before the Boodles, it definitely, definitely could go off two to one, particularly if, if there's any vibes that it gets within two or three lengths of Vauban and all this stuff that you might hear. But I'd say it'll go off short and four to one, which seems crazy. There's going to be 20 in it and a handicap hasn't ran. Like it, it's jumped French hurdles. In France, they go slower. So it's a different experience over here, but to go to Willie Mullins, the horse is going to probably improve a stone. It already has brilliant form, so I'd imagine it'll go off shorter, yeah. Davey, take anything the, to... Take the four to one, so. Take the four to one. Have you been talking to David Casey, no? Does he talk to you? He does, I, 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 on a regular basis. He rings, <laughs> he, rings me, he rings me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, I, I, I got a phone call about this horse there four or five weeks ago, wondering how... He's higher, he's higher rated in France than he is in England. He's, he's French rating, he's dropped, he's below his French rating in England for some reason. I don't know whether the handicapper is a sharing him or something like that, I don't know. But I got a phone call about four weeks ago to look up this Gaelic warrior um, and try and buy a relation of his that he is. She no doubt did, did you? No, I looked, but there wasn't. <laughs> someone else must have got in before me. <laughs> But uh, no, there was no relation of his around um, that he was the next coming. And I saw a picture of him. And he is dark bay. That he is bay and he's alive. And there's Gaelic Warrior written outside his stable. And that's as much as I know about Gaelic Warrior. I think Patrick uh, gave an interview uh, to the Sporting Life maybe three weeks ago. And he just, he gave it, uh, he talked it up anyway. I think it went from 12s to 5s that day. So He must have been talking to Casey as well. Everybody's talking to Casey except you. Just won't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, getting back to the boodles, like, it's, it's a tough race. It's You've ridden a few at a minute, Davey, in, the, in their last few runs. What, what do you think will be on on the day? What's the horse in the green pullers we're after watching them riding? The green and blue colours? Ebisari, is it? Ebisari. What about no, him? Gavin though? gives him a good shout, too. What about him? Tell us yeah. about him, Davey. Runs tomorrow, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a grand horse. What's going horse. on with him, Davey? Pardon? What's going on with him, Davey? Ah, he, he got all the allowances in Mallow, and um, he beat what looks to be a... You know, moderate. I'd say that's moderate enough farm. Barry, you think your horse is going to win the, the boys' race? I mentally chosen one by 20 lengths and thoroughly. I, I, I thought he did too now myself, but I wasn't really watching the farm. But anyway, yeah, um, one Davy, explain this to me. And uh, no, he's a grand horse. It was a bit of a shock to me, to be honest, in Mallow. A bit of shock, bit of a shock to everyone in Mallow, uh, except Gordon. He thought he'd run well, and then he was 
he, he was disappointed with Jack in Navin and very disappointed with me in Nace. So he'll have to step up plenty for to win a Boodles. Uh, he runs again tomorrow because guards. May, maybe I feel he's a little bit worried about his jumping, but um, he'll have his fourth run tomorrow. He doesn't need to run tomorrow, but he'll have his fourth run tomorrow. And the way you're talking there, does that mean you'll be more likely to ride one of the other Elliot horses? The Tide Turns is the name I heard in the audience there, who ran very well last week. Yeah, he did. I, I've never sat in him. Um, I was to ride him in Leopardstown, and he was a non-runner, and then he won his next run in Punchestown. So, um, and again, as regards, you know, picking a horse, I won't pick any of them. I'll just be put on whatever horse I'm put on. I, I've no say in that. So, Gordon is the man there. Okay, we tried, folks. Both of them are... are deflecting the questions there for the Boodles. What about the Mayors, Ruby? Anything to tell us for that one? I like Stormy Island. I think she's the best form. Um, I think her Rel Kale run is the strongest uh, form of the, of the Mayors in that division. She's 5-1. to one. I think she's a wonderful price. Um, I think she's the strong. I, honestly, I was a little disappointed with burning victory yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised if Queensbrook turns that form with her. Um, but I'm still not sure that'll be good enough. I, I, I like... Stormy Island. Another crack in each way, about five to one. Massive, yeah. Stormy Ireland and ringing vote of confidence for Ruby there in the Mayor's Hurdle. Uh, Davey, the National Hunt Chase, I wanted to talk to you about this one. Obviously, you won't be riding in it, but Run Wild Fred's a horse you've had some big days on. He's favourite currently. Does he have all the credentials to win that three mile six contest, do you feel? Yeah, I, I actually just looking at the at the three mile race and that's cutting up. I actually wouldn't mind riding him in the in the RSA. But you've no say much you're riding, so Oh no, I don't and that's why he's running in the in the in the in the four mile or the three mile six. And also he can't ride in the national on chase so. Yeah. Uh, I'd actually like to ride him in a, in an RSA the way everybody's speaking, the Gallop and the Shams and, and all of them are taking each other on in the um in the two and a half mile race. Uh not, not sure he's blessed with an awful lot of stamina. Um, we know he stays three miles, um, but whether he'll stay three six is, 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 is a huge question. Um, so, but he's a classy horse. He'd be, he'd be a classy horse in, in that three mile six race if he'll stay, and I'm sure Jamie will ride him, and if there's any, any amateur out there going to get him to stay, Jamie will get him to stay. So for all them reasons, Yes, I, I would be on his side if he was to run the fo in the form. I'll just a slight worry about the stamina. Good man. And the Mayor's Hurdle, are you going to be on Party Central in that one? The no Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Sorry, that's the Mayor's Novice. Yeah. The Mayor what are you going to be on in the Mayor's Hurdle? Well, Queensbrook is in there. Queensbrook. Whether I'll ride her or Jack. I, I, I was to ride her the other day in Punchestown. Um, I would love to ride her. She's a, she's a, she's a solid filly. Um, just lacks a little bit of pace, um, but definitely would grind, grind it out if, if it came to it. Okay. Good stuff. Let's move on to day two then. We might let the video go again, please, guys, here. The Ballymore Novice Hurdle, the first one we're going to talk about. Uh, so Gerhard is 6-4 to four favourite on the sheet here. Dysert Dynamo 2-1. to one. Obviously, we're a little bit in the dark about which one is going to turn up for this race. That's last year's champion hurdle, which is just going to play before we move on to the novices. But, Gavin, can I come to you here, first of all? As I say, we're a little bit in the dark as to what's going to happen with the two Mullins horses. And sounds as though Willie is going to leave this until the last minute. Is this a no-go race for you at the moment, or, or is there an angle somewhere there? I think it's a poor Ballymore. I, I, I can't have Journey with me. I know it was a big drifter today in the exchanges, but and then it came back in again. Uh, just, I don't think that horse is blessed with speed. I think uh, Ginto or Ginto has a solid chance. Uh, the Lawlers and Ace works out very well the last couple of years, provided the winner of the Ballymore. But I just think, I think if Sir Gerhard goes here, um, I think he's one of the bets of the week. I think six to four is unfortunately the right price. Um, if you go and watch, I watched him winning his point to point in, in Bulta. Uh, it was November 2019, and he beat Manella Drama by 12 lengths. He's now rated 147 over fences. So I think he'll definitely stay. He's nice. He's a dot keen, but he, you know, overall he's reasonably relaxed. I could see him sitting second or third. And in the Ballymore, you often needed a horse with a, a turn of foot, and he definitely has it. So for me, um, Sir Gerhard will be sticking out, Gary. Okay, and this is Sir Gerhard stablemate Dyser Dynamo winning at Punches Ten. Ruby, I know I take your point on board. You say you won a two and a quarter mile bumper, but he did look rather free this day at Punches Ten. Are you confident that if he was the one for this race that was chosen to run here, that he would see it out effectively? I actually think it's easier to control the Bally more than it is the Supreme. Um, two and a half miles, front runners can win the Supreme, but 
you book out and go into Ballymore, you'd get in front and dictate it. You could dictate it easier than you could in the Supreme. Um, I think it's an easier race to ride a front runner in. I, I wish I had been more confident on different horses I rode in the past and rode them that way in the Ballymore instead of compensating for the extra half mile. I actually had the balls to go and sit in front. I might have won the race once or twice more, but um, I, I think it's an easier race to make the running in than the Supreme. Having a look at Jinto winning here at Nace, this was a grade one. The Mullins horse on the left there, what do you want, was favoured this day. Davey, you rode hollow games in this one, the horse in behind in the green cap. What did you make of Jinto's win this day? Is he a big player if he runs here? Ah, uh, he's a quality horse. Um, the, the step up again to two, five, two, four and a half won't be an issue. Um, he's a solid, solid horse. Um, you know, it's hard to fault him in anything he's done, really. He jumps really well. He's, as Jack done that, to, he's, he has the opportunity of bouncing out and, and sitting in front if needs be. Uh, he's pretty straightforward. Um, it would all depend on Sir Gerhard, Dysart Dynamo, you know, whichever way they go. I think you're a little bit hard on Journey for me. I have a liking for that horse ever since. For me, it was him. I know, I know, I know, I know, that's what I mean. I'm, not, I'm only looking at you, <laughs> all right, I'm okay. talking about him. Um, so um, I, I think he definitely is a player, and we also have Mighty Potter um, that could, he may go for the Supreme, he may go for here. We also have uh, Three Stripes Life, who is open to go to either race. Um, so Gerhard Dysart Dynamo, Constitution Hill, if they all don't run here, you know, I would be very sweet on the likes of Mighty Potter and Jinto, and I think Gordon would hold a huge hand in this race, if that was the case. Um, but I agree, Sir Gerhard looks to be the best horse. If, on, the, on this sheet here in front of us, if Sir Gerhard run, he'd be, he, he would be a deserved favourite. Good man. Ruby, I just wanted to wrap up with you. There was a horse we talked about a little bit last week on the road to Cheltenham, who I think could possibly have a place chance here at a big price. A horse called Wonderwall. He ran in a really messy race at hunting in the other day and fell at the last when he still had every chance of winning. Could you see a case to be made for him moving into the frame at least yeah there is he ran in the, the Sydney Banks at, at Huntington that was a messy race LA Bell eventually won it I think she's a runner in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle um, but I think we've looked lost over Nicky's horse Henderson's horse with a big chance here walking on air um, I was really impressed with him in Newbury I mean, he's a, he's a, I think he's a good each way bet in this race like the way he stays he got done for a bit of toe in a two mile bumper at Kempton but he's been rock solid since so I think walking on air is a good bet here, actually. Walking on air, then, who is a very well-bred sort, trained by Nicky Henderson, who's got some very, very good horses to go to war with this year. He's not actually on the sheet there, but what sort of price would he be gaving at the moment, do you think? I think he's around 12 to 1, Gary. 12 to 1, OK. Gary, if Wonderwall wins this... Am I going to sing Wonderwall? I will sing Wonderwall. You'll sing it. I didn't say he'd win it now. Make fact. it out there. Right. <laughs> because we, is this being recorded? What he'll have it's to not do, some we've enough witnesses. What he'll it? have to do after the third or fourth hurdle is remove the most of them from his tail. He cannot jump. He hasn't jumped a hurdle in any one of his races. Okay. He's a terrible horse. He's a good, <laughs> he's a good horse, but he's a terrible leper. A terrible leper, okay. Oh, geez, he very, did he did fall last time in fairness, but And hit every hurdle in Doncaster. And still won. Before that. Didn't he? Yeah, it was still one, yeah, fell in and then hit a couple more hurdles in his run before that. Hopefully the fall will wake him up. Man. Well, something will have to wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Davey, rubbish in my uh, outsider there, Wonderwall. I'm not, I'm not surprised by that, in fairness, I'm well used to it. Let's move on then to the Brown Advisory. This is obviously going to be a, a potentially a big clash. We've got some big names in here. Just roll the VT again if we can, guys. Ruby, got to start with you here for a long time. A lot of people assume that this horse, Galloping the Champ. Please, folks, a bit of quiet down the back there because we want to hear Ruby's thoughts on this horse. Ruby, I've worked with you a couple of days when he's won at Leopardstown, and you don't get excited too often, but this is a horse who I know you feel has all the attributes to go to the top. But is this the right race for him? The round advisory? Mm. No, he runs in the right race, the Turners. He's definitely running the Turners, you think? I, I think that's what Willie said yesterday morning. And it's a funny one. I was just flicking through comments, people giving out that they've been put through the ringer that he's not running in the Brown Advisory, anti-post punters. Nobody said he was running in the Brown Advisory. People assumed he was running in the Brown Advisory, made up their own opinion, had their own bet, and now they're whinging because Willie Mullins has made up his mind. Um, so 
that's you know that's life. But to me, you watch him, and if you're going to anti post bet, you really should look at what trainers do. They're, they're, they're creatures of habit, and what they do with horses. And like you, you watch him and how he jumps and how he attacks his fences. Willie Mullins always runs those in the shorter race rather than the longer one. I can't understand how people are so mystified that he's going two and a half. Is there anything, we'll come to that race in a second, obviously the race on the Thursday. Is there anything outside of him that you would fancy at the prices? Because this horse now, I think, is the one who's going to be seen as the one to be. This is Brave Man's game. Yeah, and he is a very good horse. Um, I think Capadano will give him a race. I thought Capadano did well to get as close to Bob Bollinger at Punchestown as he did, considering that there was three fences bypassed in the back straight and only one fence in the home straight. Now, I know Capadano fell in Leperstown, but jumping is his, is his forte. I think he'll, he'll run a big race. And it depend on what Lucinda Russell does at a high senior. I think a high senior is a very good racehorse. He's, a, he's an OK jumper who's progressed with his jump and I thought he was better be in Weatherby on his last start. We just pause the VT there guys, thanks very much, cheers. When he was going a bit quicker, but I think a high senior is a fair horse as well, so I don't think it's a penalty kick for Brave Man's game and I'd probably nearly side with a high senior if he runs. Okay, Gavin, I want to bring you in because I know that obviously that when that news came through it was a bit of a blow for you, I think the way you were talking earlier on, I think you were one of those that was hoping Gallop and Deschamps might run in the other race, but now that it looks like he's not going to be in this one. What's your view on the race? Hey, obviously, it's a pity we didn't get to see Brave Man's game against um, Gallop and Deschamps. Um, Brave Man's game is rated 164, which is incredibly high uh, for a novice to get that before Cheltenham. Usually, horses get high ratings from Cheltenham. But he wins a handicap recently off 159, got £5 for it, so it's, a, it's an incredible rating. Uh, high Senor was beaten 7.5 lengths at Kempton. Look, a High Senor's best two runs have been left-handed, in Newbury, the last day of Weatherby was much better. Kempton wasn't his cup of tea at all. He, he just jumped bad on the day. Um, so I think it'll be a lot closer. But seven pounds a lot to make up. Capitano, fair enough. He's only rated 1.52. Um, the fall, it's, it's hard to back a horse after having a fall before going to Cheltenham. Look, at I've never been Brave Man's game's biggest fan, but it's hard to go against him with seven pounds in hand. So I'd, I'd just about go for him ahead of High Senor. Thanks, Gavin. Davey, what's your view on this race now? No gallop and Deschamps by the look of things. Who's going to take advantage? Oh, it's a brave man's game. Mm. Um, he, he's definitely... Uh, you, you could, there is a case for the home pre press. Um, Venetia Williams' horse. Um, maybe soft ground is... is, is long race. Are we uh, looking long at... Long press front in the turners. Sorry. Um, I'm even more confident he won't win this than you are yeah, that right. Wonderwall won't win okay. the Ballymore, Davey. Well, that, that makes it easier again for brave man's game. Um, I, I just think he's from day one he's just natural he's definitely a better chaser than he was a hurdler um, very very good horse the one thing that really astonishes me with Brave Man's game is when you look at the speedometer now I don't know how, how accurate it is but when you look at the speedometer on the corner of the television on Racing UK he is constantly up around 30 miles an hour and very rarely does it go below 30 miles an hour when he leaves the ground for a fence. He is absolutely fantastic to jump. He bags of stamina. The only worry is, and Ruby will probably tell us about this, but Paul Nicholas's horses are not flying, but he does say that he, he gives them a vaccine this time of the year, and it always, they always seem to, he says it's, it's, it's an annual thing. Is that right? Can you remember back? Is yeah, that I, I can, yeah. He always gives them a, a vaccination at Christmas. The vac Paul vaccinates twice a year. Um, most people only vaccinate once and he's always vaccinated twice but January as in the first couple of weeks in January might be a bit quiet but I don't ever remember February being overly quiet I can remember going to Newbury when Brave Man's Game won that last day like but I can remember going there and riding three and four winners of Paul Nichols uh, not Brave not the, the best novice you have scraping home in a novice handicap yeah. so there is a concern with the horses and it's definitely not the vaccine yeah, that's the only worry I have is I was least impressed by Brave Man's game the last day than I was earlier on in the year with the way he'd done things. Um, and he showed that last year also he faded off to, you know, not definitely not as good as what he was earlier on in the year than what he was at Cheltenham uh, last year. So that is a slight worry uh, with Brave Man's game. But all told, I think he's, he's the horse bear, Statler or something like that can improve up into that grade, I'm not quite sure. 
I'd actually love to ride um, Gordon's horse in this, the horse that we mentioned earlier on for the for the that's going to run the four mile. I, I'd I'd love to ride him in this. Run wild, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Do you give yourself any chance of talking them into it? None, None whatsoever. It would have nothing to do with me. There's absolutely no point bringing it up. Okay. No. <laughs> Thanks for that, Davy. Let's move on then. We've got the champion chase, the build topper on day two, and we'll roll the video footage here again because we're going to, first of all, have a look back. Probably the race of the season so far between Energy Mean and Shishkin at Ascot, which loses nothing in the retelling. I'm sure you'd agree. And Ruby, we obviously know the outcome at this stage wasn't the one you were hoping for in the day, but you've been asked this a lot in the interim, and I know Willie's been asked it a lot as well. Is there any reason on a different track on a different day why the horse in the blue there can turn the form around? I don't think so. Um, you can look at it whichever way you want, but I know if I was going to Cheltenham riding the one in yellow, Shishkin, I would be going to the start thinking, as long as I don't take a ball to this, just, just do it right, um, keep it simple, this will win. And I think he just needs to have average luck. Once he doesn't have bad luck, to me, Shishkin is going to win. If Shaq and Bourgeois winning here now, look, he's, he's a very good horse on his day, but his record in the UK is kind of average. I haven't forgiven him for not winning last year's champion chase. I thought he got an unbelievable run through on the inside. He only had to race for about a furlong and a half, and he couldn't manage to do that and win the race. So I'm afraid Shaq is he's he's on the... The back burner with me, and I just can't see Enoch Amin turning around with Shishkin. He just doesn't need bad luck. If Shishkin doesn't have bad luck, he'll win. And just to come back to this, or Shaq and Persuade, there have been plenty of theories about why he maybe hasn't produced his best. I mean, do you think there's anything in this business about him not being a good traveller, or is it just a case that maybe he's fallen a bit short? I wonder, does he want further? I wonder, does he really just want to be going a bit further and using a turn of foot in a, in a, in a race over a, a different distance? Um, I just think he's fallen short. at the. Uh, he's grand in Ireland, but I think he falls short at the top level in the UK. OK, so even though Willie Mullins has got two of the big three here, Ruby thinks it's going to be Shishkin who comes out on top. Davey, let's go to you. Three smashing horses. Anybody would love to be involved with any of Shishkin, Shaq and Bressoir, Energy Mean? What would be your pick of them? Or could there maybe be a fly in the ointment? No, no, I'm Shishkin all the way. Um, I always was. I just have, have a soft spot for him. Um, he's a very, very good horse. He's, he's been that tr out throughout his career. Um, I suppose it's an interesting one. Envoy Allen hasn't shown his, his best form yet. I can't see him winning this race, but I can see him outrunning his odds of 16 to 1. 